Hey, hey, this is Fleece Johnson with a Hustler Spirit doing an interview with the man that interviews me, Big Lee. How you doing today, Big Lee? I'm doing good, man. You doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. You know, at the request of so many of the fans, they wanted to know who you were, how we came to know each other, and what type of brother you are. You know, you are. And I like to interview you because there's some things I like to know too, right? I mean, I know the business side of you, but I want to know a little more, right? Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me go on and hit you up with a uh, question. First of all, fans want to know, you know they want to know, how did you come to meet Fleece Johnson? Well, it was a mutual friend that introduced me to Fleece. Uh, we both from Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, they know I'm a businessman. They knew he needed uh, he needed a little help getting his name back out there and getting things cleared up so the truth can come out. So they introduced us. We sat down and talked like men, had a conversation, and uh, we agreed to work together. And that's what we've been doing since uh, June. Okay, that sounds good. But here's what I want to know. That I know my fans want to know our fans. Okay, that's good. But before you met Fleece, uh, where you, uh, you know, there's a lot of hustlers out here. That's right. A lot of bad sugar nights running around. And so people get it any way they can get it. And so the fans is kind of curious, did he jump on Fleece seeing a money opportunity because... His life is bad. Uh, did he do it out of this? He learned something about the brother and wanted to give him an opportunity. So the fans want to know where you were before you met me financially. Were you straight? Yeah, I was I was good. I had a, I've been owning a cleaning company for 15 years. I got a degree in electronics and a CDL, so I've, I've been working all my life. And uh, I hustled in the early days also, so I was doing pretty good. But when I met Fleece, uh, when I heard about him, uh, of course my man went the same place everybody else is right. Man, like uh, the Booty Warrior. Yeah, it did. I said I don't know about this. Right. I'm, I'm about to sit down and talk to him. So once I sat down and talked to him, I found out who the real man was behind the the myth uh, out of rumors. You, you wanted to know. Yeah, I had to know. So I asked him. I asked him three questions. When I first met him, that was going to decide me interviewing him or me working with him. And those questions were, uh, have you ever graped a woman, messed with a child or an old person? He said, no, there's been no record of any of it. And I said, we can move forward. And that's what we did. Okay. So that's your uh, principles and stuff that, you know, it's a land nobody want to cross, right? Right. Nobody want to sit there and mess with somebody that done rape kids and did stuff to old people. You know, just, you know, we got a land that, you know, we let, we don't cross. Right. Okay, now the next question is, uh, so you had a cleaning business before you met Fleece. Yeah. Your own business, you got a degree in electronics. That's another plus. Uh, you got your own transportation and whatnot. So now that you found out, that all of this internet stuff was just a get back at Fleece for his uh, fights uh, he held in the penitentiary with the corrections department. I mean, it's powerful. I mean, that, that, that motivated you to, to really put this out there. It did. Uh, once I found out that, uh, that those rumors was... Uh we all get caught up on TV. I get it. Uh, just like we do this interview, I can interview him a certain way and I can edit it to make it look a certain way that uh, that I know it wasn't intended to be. So once I sat down and talked to him and I talked to people that he grew up with, talked to people he did time with, and uh, I, I decided that we was going to work together because uh, it's been some yeah. unfortunate things said about him that just wasn't true. Right. Now, I, I, can, I can see that. Now, I'm fleeced. I'm the one interviewing you. But here's what gets me is that 
I done already told my fans that I grew up without a, a hero. I didn't have uh, father figures in my life, heroes. I was shut down at an early age where I didn't have nobody. Never listened to nobody, but I listened to you. And uh, so, do you have some sort of uh, education in dealing with people? Uh, no. Is it just something you develop? How do you come across that? I just know how to talk to people. Uh, once you find out that if you respect people, you'll get respect back. That's where it starts at. I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm not here to take you through a whole bunch of things that's not necessary. So once I sat down with you, I, I knew it was somebody that I was, I was wanting to work with, and I knew we had potential of doing some great things and kind of coming full circle to you working with kids when uh, after your book come out. <coughs> so. I, wanna, I wanna know how you felt. Now, Vlad, Vlad TV is, uh, they got a pretty decent broadcast now. They got a lot of people listening to Vlad TV. I just wanted your opinion of how you felt when he told you I that your Fleece Johnson is rape men, uh, he got uh, proof or something, and then you called him out because you got rackles that I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, what, what, what would you say to Vlad about this? Well, I made a video uh, stating some of it, so I wasn't happy about it because I knew it. I, I was the one communicating with Vlad's people when they decided to do the interview. And his excuse to me is the reason why they, was, uh, they, they didn't want to do the interview was, uh, what he was trying to do is say he didn't have enough staff to come to Louisville, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. He didn't have enough people working. He had a, he got people in California, New York, and he supposedly didn't have staff. And I was mad because he said he actually had record of it, and that was a lie. I know it because I got the records. So whatever records he got, I would love to see him. Uh, but that was a lie. So. I called him out on it, and I'm gonna leave it at that because I, I don't even want to say his name no more. So, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> okay, now, uh, what is uh, the fans want to know? What is the uh, the goal in these interview? What is the plans for Fleece? You have plans for Fleece, apparently. Uh, for yourself also, I guess? Uh, well, the, the number one plan was to uh, to clear his name. Uh, Flea said some things, because, you know, I was when in the early 2000s when the MSNBC interview was done. Uh, I was old enough to understand what was going on at that particular time, and I was a free man. Uh, so I thought the same thing everybody else thought. You know, Fleece loves booty. It's more important than water. I heard the same thing everybody else heard. But I also, uh, I watched the whole episode several times and also had a conversation with him. So once I understood that they edited uh, the, uh, the special on MSNBC, uh, Lock of Raw, I think it was Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, when they edited it, when I, when I found out they edited it and they made him look bad when he was just, they wanted him to say the most outrageous things to these kids to keep them out of prison. And when I, when I seen them edit that and kind of move it over like he was, that's the way he was living at the time, then uh, I, I just thought it was wrong. And I was going to help him clear his name the best I can. Well, you did do that. You did help him clear his name, uh, but... The question is that you didn't answer. What is your plans for Fleece now? Now you don't clear his name, mm -hmm. and uh, so what do y'all have next in land? Well, we're working. We're working with you. I ain't gonna speak to you in third person. You don't want to interview. As by working with you, I've taken it personal to 
help you live the remainder of your life in some type of decent way after hearing your stories. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have took it personal, but I, I do. Right. Uh, and, and I'm going to keep taking it personal until I see you living a life I feel like you deserve to live. Uh, people keep on dogging you based on what you did in prison. And I'm not saying in prison you should be done anyway by anybody. But what I'm saying is, you know, you somebody that if you listen to the story, you know that you just didn't have a chance. Right. And that's the way I feel about it. That's my opinion. Well, that's a good opinion. And it's, uh, and it's true. Uh, uh, it's true. So I told somebody that uh, the good I do now, somebody told me the other day, say, hey, please, you a good man? I said, no, I'm, I'm trying to be one. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'm not going to be considered good until the good I do outweighs the wrong I once did. So let me ask you this. Uh, have y'all any plans for uh, uh, movies, books, uh, interaction do, do, with do we, kids? Do we have any plans? Well, I'm doing the interview. I know, so I but, but I can't talk to you in third person. Okay. Uh, yeah, we do. I'm hoping after the book comes out, which is so extensive, it may be a part one and a part two. The part one being the uh, part of his life from his childhood up into him entering uh, Eddieville. Penitentiary. Penitentiary. And because uh, it's, it's some of the craziest stuff you'll ever hear. It's, it needs to be heard. And... Uh, after after it comes out and part two comes out, I I'm, I just think that if uh, if it reaches the people in charge in Hollywood or Fifty Cent or whoever's doing uh, series and movies right now, once they see it, I think they'll see the value in it. Right. Oh, okay. That's good. And uh, I want to say this. Because I ain't going to keep talking in third party like like you said. You know, I'm doing the interview. Yeah. People's listening. Mm -hmm. So. Your fans. Uh, yeah, I want my fans to know that he he has been. He's, he, he, he's been there. He's been there. Because since I've been out of penitentiary, you know, I came out without a, no safety net, no support. I had no support system. It's me and her. You know, I met him and uh, through friends, mutual friends, and uh, uh, at a time when I was trying to work, but uh, that wasn't going good. I had to clear my name. Didn't have no way of knowing how to go about it. He did this, and uh, yeah, I thank him. I mean. So let me ask you this, though. Yeah. Um, do you have kids of your own? I do. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, pri I'm a private, private man. man so, private man. Yeah, so I do. And they, they, they straight. And yeah. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, I want to ask you this, though. I, I wonder why. You know, I do check up on people myself. A person can tell me who they are, what they are, and it can be that, but it'll be a little more too, right? Mm -hmm. Like, who would ever thought Suge Knight would be a gangster to the people doing gangster rap, right? That he'll pull guns on his, uh, you know, people that he's supposed to be uh, teaching shit to, man. He's pulling guns on them, threatening to kill him, their family. I say, so I check people out. Yeah. And so I want to know why I checked you out. Okay. I checked you out. You know, we both live in Louisville. I I know your family. Yeah. I know people that know your family. Yeah. And uh, uh, from your daddy all the way down. So I want to know who you were. And uh, I could find nobody in this city that had anything foul. I nasty to say about you. Nothing. You know, I was I was going hard with it too, man. I said, yeah, you know him. You know Lee John. 
Yeah, man, I've been knowing him since he was little, man. I said, I bet that nigga was sitting there. I said, what he do? Use a lot of people? No, nah, man, he's been a good dude, man. He's been good from a child up. And I was throwing in there. I was trying to get people to persuade him. Tell me something about him. Couldn't find nothing. That's why I trust you a lot, man. You know, you not already show me your character and everything, man. At times when I wanted to stop and just shut everything down, you kept it going, man. You kept hope alive, bro. Which is once a week. <laughs> I go through stuff, man. Uh, but... uh. Uh, I'm really thankful, man, that you've been there for me, man. I never hear this in my life, man. Yes, all, all my so-called uh, friends, right, they turn out to be enemies. And so I said, it's hard for me to trust people. Right. I mean, man, I'm not going to. For me to sit down, the stuff I talk about on the, on the internet, I want people to know this. The stuff that I talk about are things that I try to forget about. Mm -hmm, right. I felt it wasn't nobody's business. You know, I'm not wasting my time trying to express to nobody. Anybody step to me, they're going to get what they get, right? They believe what they want to believe. That was my attitude. And so when you came into the picture, man, like I said, I don't trust people. I said, stuff I've been talking about, who 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 would confess something like that? That's true. And, and that's I mean right. I mean people say, Oh my God, he he's actually saying he done this and Yeah, I did. But you know what? I, I'm interviewing you and so I want people to know to the extent that I trust this man, you. That I confess to you things that I wouldn't have told nobody. Right. And and now I'm I'm telling the world, right? And and uh but it's a good feeling. Because now I don't have to hide stuff, right? <laughs> I don't have to work, walk around worrying about who knows this or who knows this, right? Right. I tried it in my life. And when you read my book, when they when my fans read 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 the book, they'll see that at, at trying to hide stuff, what it can lead to. Yeah. It can take you through different personalities. It can make you to keep it hid, it can make you develop all sorts of personalities. That's what it did to me. I'm running through life trying to hide me. What occurred in my life, and 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 it took you to bring it out, and so had you not met me, man, I'm just gonna say for real, you would have been fine. I would I would have lived my life right. You would have been fine. Nah, I don't, I, I was going in a bad direction. I tell you this, I give you credit because we done ran into fifteen or twenty people that did time with you. Yeah. And we done asked them. I, I've asked them. You didn't to come on to the show. And tell me about fleece. Right. And I'm gonna tell you the majority of them, they run from it. So for him to get on here and tell you his life story is obviously my my story is nowhere near his, and and I'm still not gonna tell you my business. So, right. So so the you know the fact that those people didn't want to get on here, which is their right, I don't blame them, but it tells me what you're doing is just unheard of. Yeah, it is. It's unheard of what people can. Nobody want to look at yourself, right? And uh, when I when I met you, man, it taught me. You taught me things. You younger than me, so you know. I said, "Yeah, you my brother, little brother, but big brother." So I call you little big bro. Yeah, little big bro. So, uh. I give people they do where it's done, where it's, it's, it's needed. Yeah. You know, I'm not the type to criticize somebody because he knows more than me. You know, now, take you, put you in the penitentiary, 
You have to rely more on what I got to say about that, cause I don't. I don't I'm, yeah, I'm not going in there. I'm just saying, so if we, could, we could. not making a point. I though. know, I know. I'm just, I'm a. Oh, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna just, speak it to existence. I'm not going in there. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. You showed up. me years. You showed me years ago. It wasn't a place for me. Okay, well, let me. Fans want to know this yeah. about you. Have you ever been in prison? No. Jail. I was in jail for twelve hours at one time for fighting. Fighting. Yeah. Since then, nothing. Nothing. No criminal record of stealing and robbing and selling dope by killing nothing. nobody. Nothing. Okay. See, that's what the fans want to know. They want to know who you are that is inter interviewing me. You know, uh, is he a criminal? Is is he? Do he work? Do he have a job? Do he have a house, a family? Is job, he, company. Yeah, company. Else. You got a company yeah. and a job, your own company. Yeah. So, okay. So now I want the fans to know this is the man that interviews me, that is in my life, helping me clear my name, get my life back on track, and go in a, a good direction. As a black man, though, now we have black people all over America, and they will. A lot of them, they got people that looks at these interviews to try to learn about certain black men in America. Because these people is powerful, connected, they got a circle. And anybody that they feel is true enough to get, to get connected in that circle, they check them out. Yeah. So I want to say this. Uh, I want you, uh, they, them, them type of people is the people would ask, uh, ask, would tell me to ask you a question, right? To let them know who you are, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what they can, uh, as a man, right? So I'm going to ask you the question that I, I feel these important black people, well, all people is important, but, you know, these powerful ones in this country, the ones that is, they want me to ask you this. Okay. What is your uh, opinion? Uh, what is your opinion of the black man in America and in this white society? I mean, how do you? What is, What do you think about your black race? Uh, just as a people. As a people. Uh. In general, I, I think we are still suffering from the crabs in the burrow. So, anybody that doesn't know what that means, it means you know, uh, crabs are trying to get out of the burrow. The crabs at the bottom jump up and grab them, pull them back down in there. I think we still suffer from that. Uh, I, I don't look at it as I'm, I'm one of those type of people, I don't look at it as a, a, a white man's world. Uh, I look at it as the opportunity is yours. You can do anything you want to do. Nobody can stop you. That's the way I look at it. Nobody can stop you. Only yourself. Uh, I've been doing it for my whole life. And everything I wanted, I've pretty much gotten. So Through working? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you believe... Uh, uh, what's your stance on crime? Are you for crime or against crime? I'm definitely against it. Uh, but the one thing I will say, and this is where uh, I don't even know if I talked to you about it. When it comes to young people, I'm not saying don't talk to kids that's 16, 17, 18 years old. But I think at some point we have to back up to the kids that's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and kind of deal with them in a different way because uh, I don't know if you're really gonna change these young people's minds too much that's 17, 18, selling drugs. Because once they make more money than the person they talking to, they are not gonna listen to them. So that's where I think we should go. Uh, I think the Scared Straight program thing right. should be modernized and then backed up a little bit to talk to the younger people. Right. Scare the hell out of them. Yeah, it will. 
Okay, a next question. They would want me to ask you this. Uh, the black women, they want, when they hear a good man is anywhere, mm -hmm. they like to know who he is, right? Uh, everybody want to know somebody good, right? Yeah. But what I'm saying is it is so rare nowadays that these women, is like they run across the wrong man or the wrong man run across whatever. Yeah. But you got some real powerful black ladies that will be listening to you right now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, David, uh, I'm going to ask you uh, three questions that 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 they asked me when I got out of prison. I'm going to ask you, see if you can answer this, right? right? Are you gay? No. Do you have a white girl? No. Do you do drugs? No. If bourbon's a drug. Oh, bourbon. No, I'm talking about drugs. Yeah, I know. I don't do drugs. And it's the three questions that they ask me is now. Are you gay? Do you like white girls? And do you do drugs, right? I think those are three good questions they should ask. You do think so? Yes. Yep. So. You know, like I asked you those questions when I first met you on the crimes. Yeah. They just doing the same thing. You don't want to get involved in something that... You're not going to mess with. Okay. Now, just so my fans can know, I go hard. If you don't want me to interview you, don't ask me, right? Go ahead, man. So, if I, I'm going to hit you hard, right? Yeah, with, yeah, it's just the last question, though. Okay, yeah. It's just the last say, question, okay. and I want to ask this question. All right. All people will want to know this. Okay. I'm talking about people as far as Michelle Obama, uh, Barack Obama. This is this is the question that means uh, is never asked. And when you ask them this, the ladies put a finger on their cheek and just look. Okay. They want to know this one question. This is how you can determine to them the value or quality of a man, right? With one with one question. All right. If you a married man, will you cheat on your wife? No. Okay, good question. Well, I thank you in a uh, uh uh, I hope the people listening will understand that, uh, you know, I'm Fleece Johnson, and this is the man who's been interviewing me, asked me the questions. And so I wanted to put him out of here to see, uh, let people know a little about him, what type of man he is, right? So because this was people, it's a lot of people would like to do interviews and sit down, may ask him. May want to ask him, you know, to interview them on something. So it's all on the table, right? You know, he's it's just letting you know who he is, how he is, where he's staying, right? And uh, I hope y'all enjoy the interview. And uh, you have any questions, contact Hustler Spirit. And them questions be answered. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day.